What is going on, Cub Bangers? Today is February 15th, 2016. I'm Alejandro, and let me ask you something. Should I buy this? Hit it, Pedro! So in today's episode, what I want to do here is take you guys on a test drive with me, uh, analyze what car we're looking at, and then making a decision. Should I buy this or not? And the decision is not affected by how great the car is, only how good it looks or anything like that. It also uh, is affected by timing, uh, the economy. It's affected like a regular decision of buying a car. Should I buy this, basically? So that's what the show is all about. Now, let's start with this. Today, I'm sitting in the 2015 Rolls-Royce Ghost Series 2. This is what I, I'm looking at. I honestly got a, an S-Class a while ago. I had a family emergency, had to go somewhere. I needed a big car and got an S-Class. And I grew an S-Class really, really fast. Oh, look at me, how important I am. So I went to the dealership, got an S-Class, uh, and we did our road trip that we needed to do. Got over with it. And then, as you guys know, we got that Wraith. Uh, once we got the Wraith, I was so impressed by how he drove and how comfortable he was and how happy it made me that I said to myself, maybe, what I need to do right now is go check out the Ghost and see if uh, we can substitute that S-Class for a Ghost. We're here, so let's find out. A few stats in the boring shit that I need to tell you guys about this car because some people do care. We're looking at a car with a V12 engine, twin turbocharged, uh, that produces about 560 horsepower, give or take. FYI, the Wraith produces 620. So it's like uh, around 80 less, uh, I'm not doing my mouth, 80, 60 less, whatever. So it's a less powerful car and it's bigger. Does that matter here? Probably not. Another cool thing about this car, it's a rear wheel drive car. Does it matter? No, because it's a heavy car. So either way, you're gonna get traction if you're in the snow, I mean, as much as you can, because it's a heavy car. Jumping into the interior immediately, uh, it, the car comes fully loaded. It doesn't, this one that I'm looking at, I'm just talking about this one. Uh, this one doesn't have a starlight sunroof, which it's a must for me, but I'm flexible. Uh, it doesn't have night vision, which I've never used in my Wraith, so I don't give a shit. And it doesn't have the fridge on the back to put your bottle of champagne. Oh no. So I don't give a shit about that. The one option that hurts me is the, uh, the starlight. I, I wish it had it. So, but with that said, I'm looking at a black on black spec, everything piano wood, black interiors, heated seats, ventilated seats all around. The seats on the back recline, so whenever you're feeling like a boss and you're gonna call someone and impress someone, like your wife, and be like, babe, babe, I got a driver for us. And she's like, why can't we just take an Uber instead? And you're like. <laughs> so yeah, that that's why. How do I feel about the car? car drives just as nice as the Wraith. I mean, it's a big car, but you're getting into the car thinking, oh, I'm gonna drive a big car, so maybe I should be ready. It's quiet inside those big windows that we have that are so thick, uh, they make no noise whatsoever. The paint job outside with the, the sparkles on the black is to fucking die for, honestly. The sound system in these cars is incredible. It's the first time you'll ever get into an S-Class and go back and be like, uh, that doesn't sound as great as I thought and uh, uh, Makes me nervous because I, I thought that the S-Class was the best sound system I've ever heard in a car before then again. I'm half deaf. So uh, discredit everything. I'm saying what else does the car have? You got TVs on the back on this one because that matters for some reason to some people. Pretty much the biggest thing that I, I needed in a car like this was that it has a iPhone connect, right? Which it does. Uh, you can do it via Bluetooth or USB, that it's comfortable, nice. I like the black and black. My wife got the white and white, uh, the white and black uh, Wraith. Why not do the, the black and black? I don't know. It's kind of lame, but it's cool. Obviously, coming into the dealership, what I said is, I'm predetermined to most likely buy this as long as it's a reasonable experience and it's not far off and different from uh, the Wraith, which it hasn't. It really drives pretty much the same. I actually feel a little bit more comfortable because it's bigger. I, I, I don't know what it is mentally It helps me personally to deal with my mental problems and my abandonment issues for my daddy. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Now, what exactly is the market for these cars? And this is something very important and something that is very interesting to me, I think. These cars don't have a great and solid secondary market. What does that mean? That the moment you buy your car, you're, you're spending, say, $360,000, $380,000 on a sticker price. The moment you leave that dealership, 
you're gonna lose money. You're losing a lot of money up front. And the reason, and this is my theory, is a lot of the people that can afford these cars, and it makes a lot of sense now that I, I'm getting more involved in this, can afford buying so many of these that they don't care. So whenever they get their cars, they trade them back in without looking at how much money they're getting back. They know they're gonna lose some money. You know, it's the, the dealership game. And give me the new one, give me the new one, no problem. They're not looking at costs. It does affect the market, of course, secondary market. But the good news is that because that's affected by it immediately, everyone knows that what you should do when going to get a Rolls is you wanna lease. So the best and most logical thing to do is you go in and lease one of these cars. What does a regular lease in one of these, or like a good one looks like? It's anywhere, you know, between 20, $30,000 down and between three to $5,000 every month that you'll be paying. If you do the number, and this is why it makes sense, number one, leases are a complete business write-off. So if you make enough money and you can say, hey, I'm leasing the car, I'm gonna write it off, that's what you wanna do. So every monthly payment that you make, instead of paying it to Uncle Sam, you're keeping it for your car, which I think uh, it's pretty nice. Number two, absorbs depreciation. So if you're leasing the car, you're always gonna have a uh, payoff amount of money at the end of the of the deal. Before that, say you're gonna lease the car for two to three years or four years. You do all of your calculation and say, if I'm paying every month, say $1,000, I'm gonna spend $12,000 plus the $10,000 I put down, that's $22,000 for the first year, and then for the second one would be another 12, so you start adding up. And if the depreciation, by the time you wanna get rid of the car, is below that, then you're golden. You're gonna trade the car and you're gonna get some money, but if it's Far above that, you just give the the car back, and you don't lose and you don't lose any money further or any more money. And the other one is you can come in halfway through the lease, take it back to the dealer, like rich people do sometimes, and just give them the car back and say, "I'm all gone. I'm all done. Thank you so much. Let me get another one." And the dealership will actually very happily accommodate you to do that. With all that being said, another thing that we have to look at is the economy. Where do we stand in the world's economy today? And the answer is, international markets are shit. The US market is about to take that dive down. So, is it a good time to spend so much money in a car like this? Is there a better time to buy it? No. There is a better time to buy it if you're not buying it the way I would buy this. Because what I would propose would be a lease. I mean, the moment I get back, I'll see. What I propose is a lease with a certain amount of payments. And because it's a 15, I'm not buying a 16 with a sunroof here and all the other good stuff. I'm gonna get some credit. So I'll get a few discounts there. So yeah, that's a, a basic rundown of anything and everything that goes through my mind. Now, going into other sectors, am I gonna jump into a Bentley? No, I've had two Bentleys, I've had really terrible experience with Bentleys, and they don't, see, this is like sitting in your living room. There's nothing more delicious than just being here, not worrying about traffic. I can't hear anything outside, except my own voice, which is horrible. Now I feel why my wife hates me. I get it now, I get it. Again, the S-Class doesn't write like this, not even close. It, this is this is other level comfort. To me, it's a buy if I can get the right deal. Obviously, I'm not gonna disclose the right deal because it's up to the dealership to make it happen. And they sometimes they tell you, please don't tell anyone how much you're paying for the car. So it's up to the dealership right now. So cup bangers, should I buy it? To me, the answer is yes, absolutely. And you're in that position, you have the money, you're getting ready for what's coming with the economy, you have your cash all set, why not? Absolutely should buy it. Uh, if you're looking at something that you're, it's gonna save you money and for efficiency, get an S550. Best car in the segment if you can for a cheap, I don't know how I can say that without making no sense. For a cheap price, get an S550. Uh, seven series, don't care for BMW. I know this has a lot of BMW in it, but I'm here for the comfort and the exquisiteness of my balls touching this and enjoying how it feels. So cup bangers, what would the next car for me to review and see if I should buy you think it is. Please leave that in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of first episode, what else you would like to see, what you, you don't about this. And uh, let's make more of these guys. I like it, please spend my money for me. I appreciate it. All right, Cup Bangers, I'm gonna leave you at that. I'm getting back to the dealership right now. And uh, I guess we're gonna tuck some cash. Let's do this, yo.